Hi guys, Quiff the Lazy Geek here and today we're going to talk about mount balancing. How to properly have your counterweight set up to get uh, here the best balancing option for the best tracking with your mount. Now the tips that I'm going to give today uh, are very well known. They're known as East Heavy Balancing and it only applies for mounts that are driven by a worm and a gear system. A worm and a gear system is basically you have a screw that looks like a worm in in uh, in French is called une vis sans fin, which means an infinite screw, and because it can keep turning and turning and turning, it always kind of looks the same when you look at it. And you turn that screw; it it basically has indentations in it, like a snake, and that's in, that's basically meshed into a gear that will then rotate thanks to those indicate indentations that like that are like a snake, and this will actually rotate your RA axis and your declination axis, one and the other. Um, so you need that mount. Even if the mount is, basically, is said to be belt driven, by the way, like this is the EQ6R, it has belts in there, but it's, those belts are in between the uh, motor and the worm. They're not between the worm. I mean, they're, they're still a worm and a gear. So um, this is not a true belt driven mount. Um, I think a true belt uh, driven mount would be like the uh, Avalon M0, I guess, or M Uno. I don't remember exactly which one, uh, but they are like fully belt driven mounts that I am aware of. So really you want to make sure that you know which mount, which type of mount you have. There are other types of mount like friction mounts, which uh, you don't, you basically don't have gears. You have like a round thing against another round thing and friction is holding them together. Obviously when it's only friction, it can slip, which means that for this kind of mount and also for belt mounts like properly fully belt driven mounts you want perfect balance then there's yet another type of mounts that are driven by uh, something called harmonic drives or strain wave gears and those uh as far as i'm I'm, uh, I'm concerned they're still like being beta tested by all of the buyers of those mounts. Uh, they're still very new. It's very difficult to know what exactly works best, but it seems that you want a very significant imbalance uh, between uh, the scope and the mount itself. It's very easy in RA because those mounts are made to be used without counterweights. In declination as well, you want imbalance to get better tracking and better corrections with your guide pulses. So, mm, uh, but uh, you know, it's still, it's a bit, uh, weird to me. Uh, I had a harmonic drive mount. It was beautiful. I loved it. It was magnificent. It did things that were completely incredible, but it didn't track very well and I had to return it. Okay, now we've identified the other types of mounts. Let's get back to this type of mount. So remember in a previous video, I showed how using an amp meter, a clamp amp meter, you could actually measure the power consumption of the mount while it was slewing near to the horizontal like that for the RA axis. And then you could uh, basically aim for the configuration of counterweights that use the least power when using the motors, which makes sense. The least power means you have the best balance. And um, I have a link to the video up above. It's, it's an awesome method. I love it. But you end up with perfect balance. You are not east heavy, which is the recommendation for this kind of mount. Also in that video, by the way, I was doing the RA adjustments before the declination adjustments. It's actually better practice to start with declinations, declination uh, balancing first and then RA. It doesn't make that much of a difference, but it's better. Uh, anyway, going back to uh, the, uh, the mounts themselves. Now what you, you may have heard and you've probably heard that word a lot from me about backlash. Backlash is when you have two gears. Let's say you have um, a, a, a tooth here that meshes into uh, the, the hollow of a gear next to it and they're not perfectly meshed because if they're perfectly meshed, things get binded and nothing turns anymore. They're slightly unmeshed, which means that there's a bit of play there, which is called the backlash. And you can adjust your mount backlash while I've avoiding binding. I've done that for my EQ6R. I've done that for my e AZ EQ5. I have videos on both topics. I'll put the video to the EQ6R above uh, here. But basically you can minimize that, ba that backlash, but that backlash is still there. Meaning that if you are perfectly balanced and your worm and gear, they're basically floating a bit like that. There's a space in between the two and that means that wind or something else could just push in one direction or the other and when you're doing corrections like you're slowing down or speeding up the drive to basically catch up with the star in RA then the speed up will take time to reach the actual tooth that it wants to push and the slowdown will do the same so it makes everything less reactive which is obviously bad. 
if you are east heavy, and what does east heavy mean, by the way? It means that, okay, I have my mount, it's pointing north because I'm in the northern hemisphere. Uh, to the left of this axis is west, to the right of this axis is uh, east. And so east heavy in that case would be that if my counterweight uh, shaft is in, on, in this half here, I would, have, I would need to have more counterweight or let's say the, I would need to have this part a bit heavier than the scope. So I would want basically the scope to kind of like uh, fall down. So maybe I can uh, move my, my weight here and the telescope falls down a bit. I'm a bit east heavy. You don't want to go too much ham on, the, on this. Uh, you want to uh, basically take the perfect balance using maybe the, the, the uh, clamp amp meter uh, technique. And then you want to basically take one of your counterweights and move it maybe one inch, maybe less than one inch, a bit towards the outside so that you are now east heavy and decently east heavy. What happens when you're east heavy is that the meshing, now instead of floating in the middle, you're basically completely against the tooth. And it so happens that you're turning in this direction. So you're turning against gravity. So you're always, you're, 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 the whole equipment is pushed by gravity against a gear that pushes against gravity. So it works extremely well for the RA axis. You're, you're now always in contact. You're always pushing against the gear and it works great. It is east heavy. Everything is awesome. Okay, but, uh, we have something called the meridian flip, right? Where we start at the beginning of the evening, like this counterweight shaft will go up and 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 up, and up, and up until we reach the meridian. And like we're now at the meridian and we're like, oh heck, we need to do a meridian flip. So we flip to the other side and now we have the counterweight shaft in the other direction. But the counterweight shaft is still heavier than the telescope. And there's no real easy solution to that right now. It means that now I am west heavy. And west heavy means that uh, instead of being pushed all the time, now the gear is, we're falling w along with the, uh, the gear moving. So we're always falling. It's a bit less good than East Heavy, definitely less good than East Heavy, but still better than the gear just floating around. Um, and so even w if you end up West Heavy, it's not a huge problem and it is better than perfect, perfect balance. Now there are ways that you can make your East Heavy uh, thing automatically become west heavy after the meridian flip people have basically hung down weights kind of weights from that but they're basically weights hanging by a thread literally which means that with wind it could actually impact the tripod that kind of stuff so i never want to do that but right now there's no real good method to achieve that now when i did my own tests with this particular mount that i have tuned for optimized backlash I did tests in uh, guiding uh, efficiency between east heavy, west heavy, and uh, perfectly balanced. And I pretty much got exactly the same thing. But the problem is I'm in Tokyo and the seeing here is terrible. So it's very difficult. Like there's a lot of noise in my guiding uh, figures that is caused by seeing. And that's probably the majority of the guiding error that I see is actually caused by the seeing, by basically the, the, the atmosphere being very uh, unstable. So um, that means that I cannot give good results to be able to scientifically measure and prove that East Heavy is better. Uh, but other people have reported that East Heavy actually gave measurably better results. Even West Heavy get, uh, got uh, measurably better results. Although yet other people have reported that after the Meridian flip, when they get West Heavy, they got much worse results than perfectly balanced. Uh, which kind of got, it's weird to me because it doesn't seem like it should be the case, but I guess if you have like very sticky grease in your, uh, in your gears, you're not falling very efficiently against the gear. So the gear might be like going this direction and then the grease is holding you together and then you fall down uh, into that, um, uh, that gap that has been created. That could be an explanation. So that kind of thing will depend on your mount. And depending on your mount and you may want to uh, go east heavy, which means that after the Meridian flip, you're west heavy and you know, you have tested and you think it works fine for you. Or if you've seen that West Heavy gives terrible performance, you, want, you may want to adjust your backlash as much as possible while you're avoiding binding of the gears and then see whether a perfect balance could give you a decent compromise on both sides of the meridian. Or you could do uh, something else, which is simply to always image on one side of the meridian only. I personally hate that because you're losing a lot of zenith or very high 
the, when the target is very high in the sky, which when you're in a light pollution, polluted area is a huge difference. So I, I personally would not do that. But if you're in a reasonably light and dark area, maybe Bartle 4 and below, uh, that could be a solution where you're basically uh, doing the, the tar one target over the evening, Pom, and then let's it, it's the meridian let's uh, switch to another target there so pom, we go back there and we do this again and you can get multiple targets per night while staying always on the same side of the meridian that's another solution where you stay east heavy like that and things work uh, well uh, for a lot of people like that but in the end east heavy is definitely something that you want to try out you want to also check how west heavy behaves to your mounts for your mount compared to perfect balancing and that's pretty much it for this video. In the end, it really depends on the mount. For me, it doesn't seem to make any difference either way, but this is very likely linked to my seeing, but also to the fact that I have adjusted the backlash fairly well on my mount. Um, so it really depends on your equipment, but you really may want to use a full moon, for example, to try that out and see how your guiding results are with east heavy west heavy and uh, perfectly balanced and you know um, with that that's pretty much what i wanted to cover in this video so thank you so much for watching if you're new to this channel this is a channel about astronomy and astrophotography i give tons of tips and tricks you can check my back my, my all my video history i have tons of videos with tips and tricks to get to the next level in astrophotography if that's something that interests you feel free to watch those old older videos but also go down below click that subscribe button click the little notification bell next to it to be notified when i put up a new video and regardless of all of that feel free to go down click that like button leave a comment down below with any suggestion advice remarks or you know how well east heavy west heavy or perfectly balanced has been working for you because i think in the end it really depends on the equipment and how it is set up um, so with that thank you so much for watching when you can don't forget to look up at the stars or the clouds for me uh, and i'll see you next time